best-selling Range Rover. There's a lot of people that will say online, this isn't a real Range Rover, but I'm going to show you why it is. This is the Range Rover Evoque. Let's have a look. This particular Range Rover Evoque is the D240 R-Dynamic HSE, and it's packed with spec. You get three different trim levels when it comes to the exterior of the Evoque. You've got the Range Rover Evoque, you've got the R-Dynamic, which is what this one is, and you've got the Autobiography. Now, the difference between the Evoque and the R-Dynamic is around the ground, and it's a lot more money if you want to go for the autobiography it starts from around £52,000 but you get a lot more spec there as well inside you get the fixed panoramic roof with the autobiography you get um, premium cabin lighting and you also get things like a heated steering wheel so it seems like there's a lot of room in here but what I will say is come and look at this the seats will not actually sit flat and the reason why is because of the padding of the leather seat obviously you want a comfy seat but it's just they're always going to be on this incline they won't go down now in some cars they used to take you used to be able to take the bottom of the seat out but you can't in these it's a little bit annoying especially you know if you've got stuff that you actually want to put in there something else i don't like look at this there is no handrail See, so where are you going to put your clothes? If you want to get a coat hanger from Land Rover, it's going to cost you £78 and it goes here. So if you've got any long dresses, they're going to get creased. So this is inside the HSC and you do get a lot of spec. You get the two screens, you get dual climate control. You also get this lovely upgraded steering wheel. Now, it used to be called the Atlas bezel, but now they've named it something else. But basically, it's got this lovely chin round it. It's very nice. You've got your digital dash, you've got your nav, you've also got your parking camera, you've got your front and rear sensors too. In all the books, you're going to get the sunglasses part, which is great, but you don't get that in the Velar HSE, the 2021 by the way, which I really can't understand. The car's gorgeous inside, you can't deny. It looks really luxury, I really love the upgraded um, two screens, very nice. But what I don't like is this. So, in my S, because I've got this car, but nowhere near as nice spec as this, and you've got like a, a, a little tray thing that you can pop in there and take it out, and I absolutely hate it, and it came free with my car, which is an S, nowhere near as nice as this spec, but if you want it in the new Range Rover Evoque, you've got to pay 50 quid for it. I mean, it's horrible anyway, without having to pay 50 quid for it. In here, as always, you've got lots of space, and you get, I think it's called power pack which comes as standard anyway, but you get a 12 volt socket and you also get um, two USBs, which is good. I will say though that my iPhone X has had a bit of a problem connecting to this car on Apple CarPlay. You do get Android Auto and you get Apple CarPlay, but for some reason there's been a bit of a connection problem. It's been really intermittent. Maybe this car just needs a software update. Put it into reverse and you've got a really clear camera. You've also got front and rear parking aids, which you definitely need in a car of this size. So down into drive, indicate, see if we can see the blind spot monitor. You've got to experience that, it is so good. I mean, you could off-road in this car, but I would not recommend it. It handles really nice, the driving position's lovely, and I love that you've got the memory seats, so if you've got someone that sits like in a completely different way to you, you don't have to faff every single time. I would say that this car is a little bit of an underdog because the 240 is very, very powerful, very fast. Shall we uh, put the foot down a little bit? And she's off, beautiful absolutely stunning to drive now a lot of people get these cars that do city driving i'd definitely go for either the plug-in hybrid which to me is one of the best in its class or i would go for the petrol diesel as i've said three million times on different mediums you need to we do motorway miles speed bump yeah it handles that okay to be honest okay it's got all terrain response too so i would expect it to I would definitely recommend going for the R Dynamic SE spec. Now, when I got my car, those options weren't as good value as, as when I got mine, but I would definitely say if you're going to order the new Range Rover Evoque, 
that's what I go for. And add some added spec if you want. If you want panoramic views, go for it. If you want to upgrade to metallic paint, I definitely think this colour is beautiful. You can only actually get Fuji white at the minute if you're going to order from factory as standard. And not everybody wants to drive white, or maybe you're sick of driving white, because I lease, I'm always driving black, grey or white, like all the time. Overall, I love the Range Rover though. It is a real Range Rover. You've seen it. It's so nice. I do actually drive this car and I've been driving it for two years. Not this particular one. This is much better spec than mine, but they are lovely cars and they are a true Range Rover. That's why they are the best selling Range Rover there is. Also, another thing that you're going to love about the Range Rover Evoque is the fact that it's super practical and it retains its value really well. A reported 60% almost retained value. Amazing.